Blue Origin is finally making some real noise in the space scene. And honestly, it's about time. So here's the scoop. In the past few days, Blue Origin has dropped a series of updates that caught everyone's attention, from progress on New Glenn to their work on the Lunar Lander, and even some big news about propellant transfer tech. It's like the company just flipped the switch from secretive to surprisingly transparent. Let's start with the big one. On October 8th, Blue Origin CEO, Dave Limp, announced that the first stage of New Glenn has officially been rolled out to Launch Complex 36. That marks the start of the final phase before they launch this massive rocket for the second time. But the excitement didn't stop there. Just two days later, Blue Origin revealed that they had successfully completed cryogenic propellant transfer operations inside NASA Marshall's TS-300 thermal vacuum chamber, a crucial step for future lunar and orbital missions. And as if that wasn't enough for one day, LIMP also shared a sneak peek of the New Glenn first and second stage preparations for its next big integration milestone. It really feels like we're watching a new chapter of Blue Origin unfold, one where the company is opening up, moving fast, and giving us actual progress to get hyped about. The era of silence might just be over, and honestly, I'm here for it. Now here's where things get even more interesting. All of this Blue Origin momentum is happening right as SpaceX is catching some heat, especially when it comes to potential delays with the Artemis 3 mission. The main concern? SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander might not be ready in time. And it's a bit ironic, right? Because SpaceX is known for being incredibly open with its progress, live streams, behind-the-scenes photos, constant Starbase updates. Yet, when it comes to the human landing system version of Starship, everything suddenly gets a lot quieter. That silence has sparked some wild speculation. Some in the space community are even suggesting that Blue Origin could end up landing humans on the moon before SpaceX. Yeah, you heard that right. It sounds crazy at first, but when you look at how quickly Blue Origin's HLS program seems to be moving, it's not as far-fetched as it used to be. There's also this growing perception that SpaceX has sort of swapped places with Blue Origin, at least in terms of enthusiasm for the lunar program. Some believe SpaceX just isn't as interested in HLS anymore, viewing it as more of a government obligation than a passion project. After all, SpaceX is pulling in huge amounts of money from private contracts. Think Starlink, commercial launches, and especially this year's massive wave of U.S. military launch orders. From a business standpoint, you can see why they'd focus there. So, what's really going on? While SpaceX hasn't commented directly on these claims, others think the real story might be less about shifting priorities and more about a cultural change at Blue Origin. With Jeff Bezos becoming more personally involved, the company's moving faster, sharing more, and finally acting like it's ready to compete head-to-head -head with SpaceX. And you can really trace Blue Origin's transformation back to late 2023 when Jeff Bezos appointed Dave Limp as CEO. That move alone sent a clear signal. Bezos was done waiting. He wanted results, but he didn't stop there. Bezos also brought in several Amazon veterans, names like Tim Collins, Josh Koppelman, and Alan Parker, who are known for their fast-paced, data-driven decision-making. Since then, Blue Origin has started to feel a lot more, well, Amazon-like. The focus shifted toward quicker execution, tighter schedules, and a much more aggressive launch cadence. You can already see that in action with the new Glenn Maiden launch in January 2025, which finally marked the rocket's long-awaited debut after more than a decade in development. And now they're even changing how they communicate. In September 2025, Bezos hired Christopher Fuller as head of marketing and communications. If that name sounds familiar, it's because Fuller used to be the CCO at Inspire Brands, the parent company of Arby's, Duncan, Buffalo Wild Wings, and more. So yeah, this guy knows how to build public trust and tell a strong story. 
his arrival feels like part of a bigger Bezos strategy to finally reshape Blue Origin's image after years of delays, internal drama, and missed opportunities. For context, it's now been nine months since New Glenn's first launch, and the rocket still hasn't flown again. That's a problem because Bezos originally wanted multiple launches in 2025, and that clearly isn't happening. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starship, which is far more advanced and significantly larger, has already flown four times this year, with a fifth launch scheduled for mid-October. The contrast is impossible to ignore. Historically, Blue Origin has always seemed to linger in the background, only popping up for the occasional New Shepard suborbital flight, while SpaceX's orbital launches dominate headlines almost weekly. To some critics, that slow pace and limited visibility have made Blue Origin look less like a serious rocket company and more like a billionaire's pet project. And that perception, fair or not, could be a major threat to Bezos's long-term plan to have New Glenn compete head-to-head -head with SpaceX's Falcon 9 in the commercial launch market. Fortunately, in the meantime, Blue Origin's lunar lander has become their newest spotlight project. And honestly, it's a smart move. They're probably using it to ride the PR wave for a bit, especially since it's a lot less controversial than New Shepard. Together, New Glenn and the Blue Moon Lunar Lander are slowly reshaping Blue Origin's image, moving the company beyond its suborbital tourism roots into something much more serious, orbital launches and lunar infrastructure. But while Blue Origin's making headlines, don't think SpaceX is sitting around doing nothing. The lack of updates on the Starship HLS doesn't mean they don't do anything on it. It's just how SpaceX operates. SpaceX's philosophy has always been build first, talk later. They're laser focused on making things work before putting on a show. Right now, they're prepping for a major Starship test flight, Flight 11, scheduled for October 13th. So it's safe to say they're a bit too busy to talk about HLS just yet. When SpaceX has something worth showing off, they will. That's their style, big landings, fiery tests, jaw-dropping milestones, not early teasers. And remember, SpaceX is a private company, so they're under no obligation to keep the public or shareholders in the loop every step of the way. They can work quietly, iterate fast, and surprise everyone when they're ready. There's also another angle, strategy. SpaceX was the first to win NASA's HLS contract, which didn't exactly make Blue Origin happy. So it's possible SpaceX is staying quiet to protect its competitive edge, keeping new ideas and tech developments under wraps until they're ready to go public. Think of it like not telling your classmates your science fair project until the big day. You don't want anyone copying your secret sauce. And honestly, that approach fits SpaceX's culture perfectly. Their motto has always been to try, fail, learn, and improve. They'd rather test behind closed doors than promise something that doesn't work yet. It's kind of like practicing your soccer tricks before the big match. You wait until game day to show everyone what you've got. Plus, let's not forget Elon Musk's long-term vision. His heart is set on Mars, not the moon. HLS is an important step toward that dream, but it's not the final destination. So if Musk doesn't talk much about it, it's probably because he's focused on the bigger picture. So what do you think? Is SpaceX just staying quiet for strategic reasons? Or has Blue Origin actually caught up in the race for the moon? Which of these explanations makes the most sense to you? Or maybe you've got your own theory. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take on this one. It's safe to say that SpaceX is busier than ever right now, with Flight 11 just days away from liftoff. This mission will feature Booster 15-2 paired with Ship 38, and things are really starting to take shape down at Starbase. What makes Flight 11 especially interesting is that it could be the final mission for the current version 2 Starship, and possibly even the last Starship flight of 2025, if all goes according to plan. 
A successful mission here would pave the way for the much heavier and more capable Version 3 flights expected to begin in 2026. So, what's on the checklist for this one? The main goals are to build on Flight 10's progress, gather critical data for next-gen Super Heavy development, stress test Starship's heat shield, and practice advanced re-entry maneuvers that simulate a future upper stage return to the launch site. In other words, this is all about refining recovery and reusability, the heart of SpaceX's mission to make Starship truly sustainable. But here's where it gets even more exciting. Booster 15-2 is a reused booster. It first flew on Flight 8, and while SpaceX has tested reused Super Heavy boosters before, the results have been mixed. For example, Booster 14 flew on Flight 7 and Flight 9, but was lost during the landing phase of its second mission, leaving engineers without full recovery data. That's why Flight 11 is so important. It's another crucial chance to evaluate the performance of a reused Super Heavy booster. And if B-15-2 can successfully perform its landing burn and achieve a more controlled splashdown offshore, it'll be a huge win for SpaceX's long-term goal of rapid booster turnaround. There's also another milestone tucked into this flight. 24 of the 33 Raptor engines on Booster 15 are reused from Flight 8. While SpaceX has flown flight-proven Raptors before, like on Flight 7 and 9, this marks the first time such a large portion of engines are being reused together. It's a bold step, but also a risky one. Engineers need to confirm that the reused engines can perform reliably after enduring the brutal stresses of launch and re-entry. On top of that, Flight 11 introduces a new landing burn sequence designed to simulate version 3 operations, along with a more controlled, high angle of attack descent. This updated profile will push Starship's reusability systems to their limits, giving SpaceX valuable data on how the vehicle handles more demanding re-entry conditions. If everything goes according to plan, New Glenn's second launch could lift off about a month after Starship's next test, targeting a launch window between November 9th and November 11th. Of course, that's assuming all the pre-launch milestones, including a static fire test of the first stage, go smoothly. This next booster has a fittingly bold name, Never Tell Me The Odds. And honestly, that name couldn't be more appropriate. Blue Origin is betting big on this flight. Their goal is to recover and reuse the first stage by landing it on their drone ship, Jacqueline, marking a huge step toward achieving full reusability. Inside the company, engineers reportedly estimate a 75% chance of success for the landing attempt. But let's be real, that's a pretty optimistic figure when you look at it from the outside. Remember, during New Glenn's first flight back in January 2025, the payload reached orbit successfully, but the booster was lost during the recovery phase due to a mix of propulsion and flight control issues that destabilized the touchdown. Blue Origin hasn't shared many specifics about what exactly went wrong. No surprise there. But what we do know is that software and flight control systems played a critical role in the failure. So, for this second attempt, those systems have received major upgrades and corrections, making this mission a real test of Blue Origin's ability to learn and adapt.